Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the C.R. Lawrence J580 BS brush stainless. Um, this is a top pivot that is uh, a top pivot that we do bump into occasionally. I see this installed in storefront applications. Last time I saw it, uh, Pacific Northwest, front of an Apple store. Um, those doors are uh, pretty memorable when you see them. They're all glass, center hung, floor closers, things of that nature. Well, the top pivot that they've got happening there is this really super adjustable top pivot that's going to give you the ability to really move the door around in terms of where you kind of need it to be, which is a very helpful feature uh, to be able to move that vertical axis of pivoting. And it's really not intended at all to be something that you're going to deal with in the sense of installation. You're not using it as a way to make plumb your installation. As much, in my opinion, as a way to be able to contend with an ongoing installation, meaning the maintenance, the lifespan, the life cycle of the door. That door, when you install it, it's plumb. A year later, it's going to not be so plumb. So that's really where this comes into effect. Now, regret, regrettably, they, uh, the manufacturer does not have uh, much in the, anything in the way of installation instructions. They do have what's called a cut sheet. That's really just a technical drawing of the item, which we're going to go over uh, in a moment. But let's go over the extended description of the item. Walking beam type pivot. That is uh, going to certainly be a reference to the fact that this top spindle is going to move and articulate into the top of the door can handle center hung doors weighing a thousand pounds well there's no weight that's hanging on this at all but you will have the doors desire to fall out of the opening which this um, is of course contending against it is rated for doors up to a thousand pounds pivot features a vertical as well as lateral pin adjustment to help align the door the door portion consists of a needle bearing for maximum durability the arm that's going to go up into the top of the door. Okay. Depending on your installation um, is really what this comes down to. You might have a, you know, an, a, 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 an aluminum storefront with an inverted top rail. This is going to be able to be something that you'll be able to manipulate to work in your installation. It's just going to be based on how you'll have to prep the door. If it's aluminum storefront, you're going to be able to prep that at the depth that you need. If it's a wood door, you're going to have to mortise it a bit deeper, but we'll take some dimensions of that in a minute. Supplied with finished screws and cover plate, finished screws. Well, they do give you the screws for the arm itself, which will be the big ones. They give you the four small ones to get this installed into your header. Then they're going to give you the two short little flat undercut screws that are probably 630, 632 would be my guess. For the BS, the brushed stainless cover plate, that's obviously going to install down like that. That's what it's going to look like you know, when you get it installed. Okay, now let's take a look at the adjustment possibilities on this top pivot. Okay, so we're looking at this pivot. <clears throat> it has basically, it really has one adjustment in my opinion. The walking being portion is the fact that you need to be able to retract the top pin so that you can get the door set onto its bottom closer or pivot, probably a closer, and then tipped into place. And then you can get the door open a little bit, then you can get up to the top with the screwdriver, obviously a two-person job, and then you're going to basically, the bottom adjustment, you're going to rotate that to the point, and you can see what's happening. My, my beam is coming out, my top pivot. You're going to get that brought all the way out and down. That's your full engagement. Okay. Now, you'll notice that I've got that set all the way biased to snug the door up as much as possible to the, uh, to the jam. Well, the top, well, the top, the unit, the screw furthest away from the vertical axis of pivoting, as I rotate that counterclockwise, I'm drawing my pivot point down, okay? 
So what that's going to do is basically move the entire door in the opening. So this was buried up to the top of this slotted prep. Now it's brought down. Okay. So center line plus or minus four millimeter. Yeah, I mean that's four millimeter is going to be. Uh, <clears throat> I don't, well, not that I don't speak metric, but I have to calculate it. So it's 0 0.157, so 5 30 seconds of an inch, something like that. And yet I could do 5 30 seconds of an inch in my head, but I can't, but I can't do 4 millimeter. Um, so that's where that's going to come into play. Um, the ability to adjust yeah you're, you're gonna want in my here you know installing pivots is a situation where you never get the ability to detail your vertical line of pivoting I've got that centered on that line that's where I would install it okay I'd leave it centered give me some ability to move it either way uh, in that sort of regard uh, and then be quite frankly just simply done with it um, Most sets of pivots, frankly, almost all pivots, none include the adjustment ability. This one does. Uh, this top pivot does. You certainly could <clears throat> um, substitute this top pivot into a system, whether it be by, obviously, C.R. Lawrence. They sell Rixon, uh, Dorma, ABH, anyone who manufactures pivot sets, anyone who manufactures floor closers. You'd be able to solve that into the mix if you needed the adjustability, but you know pivots don't technically feature that. You you need to be correct in your vertical axis of pivoting. You're going to mount that point up at the header, drop your plumb bob down that will locate on the floor where the spindle of your floor closer or your bottom pivot needs to occur, and that's just what you're dealing with. People will call and say, "Yeah, what's the adjustment on a on an offset or a center hung pivot?" Uh, none, zero. However, the uh, J580BS from C.R. Lawrence does give you that ability. So it's nice. The only time, again, I see these is in those installations that are existing. Um, but the front of that retail uh, area mentioned earlier, frankly, because of the volume of use on those doors, I would throw every possible means I could when originally specifying the hardware so as to give me the best ability to maintain that opening over time. I've gone through as many, you know, Herculite doors as anyone else walking into the biggest manufacturer of smartphones in the history of the world. Um, and half of the time the doors don't operate very well. Um, that's, in my opinion, a floor closer problem where the closers are literally underpowered for the application. Um, and it's because they need to be handicap compliant. So a reduced opening force gives you a reduced closing force. So the doors are somewhat anemic in operation to begin with. Um, but being able to tug that door into place is crucial. You're dealing with a glass door, probably al aluminum channels top and bottom only. You need to be able to scooch that around a little bit. Now your floor closer body is not going to have any lateral adjustment whatsoever. Um, so you need, you need to be spot on from the very beginning the ability to adjust the top only why not why wouldn't i want that um the ability to adjust only half of the door may not may not really matter um although it could you know if you got a single door and it's gone this way it might be nice to kick it out a little bit that sort of scenario let's take some dimensional properties <clears throat> so the faceplate overall six and five eighths by inch and a quarter that's definitely made of stainless steel that's what stainless looks like that's what it looks like in a brushed finish uh, the body itself is going to be overall six and a half by inch and an eighth or so overall depth you know in its projected form is going to be about an inch and five eighths um, Installing this, if I was going to do a brand new preparation, you'll see your prep doesn't change when you pull that arm back or that top pin back. Um, and, well, a little bit. It does kind of peak up a little bit. If I was going to prep for this, it would obviously, it's probably going to be aluminum, maybe steel. It could be wood as well. It'd be, 
there'd be no problem putting this into a wood door and a wood frame. If it was me, I would be just creating my preparation. If it's aluminum or steel, I would add my mounting tabs. Obviously, you're going to need to manufacture some mounting tabs for this, regardless of it being aluminum or steel. If it's wood, you can do two preparations. Do the body prep. I might stay you know, a good quarter inch away from the screws on this side. I'd get as tight to the body over here as possible. I would prep, I would prep the body of this unit okay, to the width. It would be nice to have the hardware so that you can actually measure it. And then I would do that width and that length to the overall height. Then I would come back and do only the finished plate. That's probably an eighth of an inch thick. Okay. <clears throat> no reason to go with probably. Let's take a closer look at it. Yeah, 0.122. Okay. And then I would finish off my plate. I would square my corners and I would suck all that in and I would be done. Okay. Uh, however, this plate's a little bit longer, so you're really prepping to the length of this plate. So be mindful of that. This plate hangs a little bit long on the installation. Yeah, ever so slightly long. Okay. Now the arm, um, you know, obviously you're going to want your installation to engage into your thrust bearing is what that's called. If you're going to do a wood door prep, you know, you could drill this boss down into the door. You can then come back and mortise it. You're going to want this flush to the top of the door would be my... Uh, would certainly be what you would want. If it's an aluminum door, you're probably going to have an inverted top channel. The diameter of the boss, and I don't know that that's the correct term, but I'll call it the boss. 1.24 inch. 1.24 inch. So I would prep that if it's a wood door. I would then bring my body thickness all the way down so that I was coming right to the top of the door with this. And overall height, looks like it's about three quarter. Overall length of the top arm. About seven and three quarter with an overall width, about 13 sixteenths. You'll get screws for that as well. The bottom line is if you're doing a new installation, you know, you're simply going to confirm where you, whatever you're using at the bottom, your Dormas, your Rixons, someone else I can't think of. There is certainly going to be European manufacturers that will have floor material. But R Dorma, you see a lot, obviously. Rickson, of course, is the granddaddy of floor closers, is the bottom line. Uh, but I see these installed with, with Dorma, probably just because of quantity, market, prepara uh, market uh, penetration. You're going to need to know where that bottom spindle is going to need to reside, based on the door application that you're doing. You're going to make sure that you can accommodate that up in the header. You're going to get this installed so that it's correct, correctly located, then drop that plumb bob down, and you'll be in real good shape. Um, <clears throat> sell about, I don't know, not, ma not very many a year, um, and I would attest that to, I don't see them installed lots of pl different places, um, <clears throat> and it's probably because it's an expensive piece of hardware to add to something that you're already buying. If you're buying a floor closer, you're probably already getting a top pivot, so here you are buying another top pivot, so be mindful of that. Um, finally, uh, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Jackson products that we sell, let's, let's back up, to the cut sheet. I didn't go over the dimensions of that as we were talking about it. Um, it does show the top arm with the boss pointed towards the top. And yes, if you have an inverted top channel, hopefully the thickness of the overall height of the boss, which I don't recall what it was now, is going to be flush with the top of the door. Regardless of how you accomplish that, you need to accomplish that. It'll look like that. If it was a wood door, I would just uh, simply turn it over and I would do a couple of fancy preparations. Drill my boss and then I would go down just for the thickness of the top arm, flipped over so that it was flush with the top of the door. However, you're going to end up installing that. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, there's no installation instructions. That's not unusual uh, because it is a piece of hardware that cannot be installed any other way and be installed correctly. Plum. Jam to the vertical center line, specific dimension, plumb down to the bottom. That's that's where you do it. Center of the thickness. It's it's center hung, which means the vertical axis of pivoting is down through the center of the thickness of the door, and the pivot will technically double act. 
okay? Whether or not your floor closer double acts is a different story. Um, but center hung pivots will certainly double act unless something is stopping the door, an auxiliary stop or a piece of hardware or the or the fact that the door is not radiused, uh, et cetera. So anyway, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the C.R. Lawrence products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's catalog. And there are several and many full line catalogs, architectural metals, uh, storefront hardware, Blumcraft, egress, compliant, push bars, um, shower door hardware, architectural hardware, it goes on aluminum storefronts, it goes on and on with C.R. Lawrence, um, which is a good thing. And then of course, finally, a link to the manufacturer's website. Really nice quality people over there. Their, their customer service reps seem to be constantly capable of getting me the answer that I need. And I've detailed a couple of, one in particular, a very large uh, order, although it wasn't but maybe a dozen of the Blumcraft egress L-shaped poles. But their tech support department over there really knows what they're doing. And I was very impressed by the mastery that they had over the subject matter. Not that I do, uh, because I, I'm not the manufacturer, but it's nice to be able to talk to somebody who understands not only the hardware, but what you're installing it to and the material that it's being installed to in, in the sense of how you apply that material. So what I'm trying to say is they know their hardware and they also know the stuff that you're putting it onto. So they see the whole picture. And that's what, uh, that, that's, that positive technical support success stories is what resides in my mind mostly with C.R. Lawrence. Any questions on the J580BS or any other C.R. Lawrence product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.